It's 10 a.m. on WKYT Midmorning. We're at the scene of a serious crash on Interstate 75 in Laurel County. Medical helicopters have flown multiple people out to the hospital. A local hip-hop artist and his wife are collecting bottled water to help out families in Flint, Michigan. And we got a pretty good-looking day in store. Also, much warmer temperatures. We'll talk all about that coming up. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning to you. We can use that warmer weather. I'm Bill Can't Brandt. <laughs> and I'm Barbara Bailey. It is really pretty yeah, out there. And, and you're right. We earned it after yeah. the, the weekend that we had. <laughs> what a day it was. Uh, Friday and, of course, difficult travel and a lot of uh, folks spending time at home, you know, making the best of it, right, over the spending weekend. Spending time and spinning wheels if they did go right. out. Yeah. So. Just check in with Mike and Alan, our First Alert Weather Center. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, there's a little hill there in my neighborhood as I'm trying to get on out. I got stuck. I had to back down and go right back up but you know what you'll get through it it'll be all right live sky camera there is your shot it's beautiful outside it really is you have the sun beaming down on the snow a snowpack i know it causes a lot of trouble but man is it pretty outside 34 degrees there in lexington 37 now in richmond still at 24 in london as they have that squared away there on i-75 northbound in london there was a wreck earlier but that is now uh not so much anymore so they have that squared away they uh, took them back toward the hospital. So we're good to go in that region. 42 there, much milder in towards your afternoon. And it looks like we're going to hold on to temperatures well above freezing. That's the key. I'll show you that in your forecast coming up. All right, see you. Thank you. And leading our news this mid-morning, what Micah was just alluding to, slick roads are believed to have played a role in a serious crash in southern Kentucky this morning. It happened in the northbound lanes of I-75 near exit 41 in Laurel County. Four medical helicopters were called to the scene. WKYT's Mark Barber is in London now with our top story this mid-morning. Mark? We're still working to get more information about this serious crash. Police say a tractor trailer jackknifed right before the exit for London, and that triggered a second crash between at least two vehicles that were behind the semi. Emergency management tells us four helicopters were rushed in to fly out those who were injured. At this time, there's still no word about how many people were hurt and how seriously they're hurt. After several people on stretchers were flown out, crew started working to tow the wrecked vehicles off the interstate. A truck that crashed behind the tractor trailer flipped onto its roof. It appears as if that truck has an out-of-state license plate, and officers spent quite some time putting suitcases that flew out of that truck back inside. The crash caused quite a serious backup on I-75. For hours, a long line of traffic stretched down the interstate for miles. As for what caused this serious crash, police are still investigating, but they say at this time, it appears as if that tractor trailer jackknifed on slick roads, just like those semis that jackknifed up in Rockcastle County and stranded drivers for hours after the snow came down late last week. So again, police here still trying to figure out what caused this crash. We're here. We're working to gather information. We'll have the very latest for you on this serious crash coming up on WKYT News at noon. In Laurel County, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And police were able to relieve some congestion on the interstate by keeping the exit ramp open while cleaning up that crash. In Bourbon County this morning, crews are still working to fix a water leak in downtown Paris. Drivers are being asked to avoid High Street between 8th and 14th Streets until the repairs are completely made. It is not clear what caused that water main to break. It's been leaking since around 8 o'clock last night. It's causing a lot of slick spots around that area, and the repair crew Crews are expected to finish working, they're now telling us, in about a half hour. The case against a man accused in one of Lexington's four murders of this year moves forward today. Donald Roark Jr. is accused of killing 28 year old Corinne's White outside an apartment on Red Mile Road earlier this month. Roark's preliminary hearing was this morning. The judge will decide if there's enough evidence to send the case on to a grand jury. The Scott County Sheriff's Department is investigating after finding a 24-year-old man who was shot behind a Georgetown truck stop. It's the county's first slaying in three years. And deputies say witnesses saw two men attack and shoot 24-year-old Jeremiah Washington over the weekend on Tips Lane. Police say the shooters then took off in a red four-door car, possibly a Chrysler or Dodge. Investigators are trying to figure out why Washington Washington, who was from Memphis, was in Georgetown. The victim has been um, arrested in Lexington in the past. 
which would lead us to believe that he has connections or ties there. And hopefully being able to release um, our victim's name, someone out there will, okay, I know that guy and I know he's been running with whoever. The Department of Corrections says Washington was convicted in Fayette County last year for possession of cocaine. Well, millions of people across the East Coast are finally heading back to work this morning following that crippling winter snowstorm. Many emergency travel bans have been lifted, but as Brian Webb reports, getting around on slick snow covered roads is already proving tricky. While much of New York City came back to life after record snowfall totals, delays and cancellations are still expected for the nation's busiest transit system. Hundreds of travelers packed into New York's Penn Station as the first trains departed Sunday night. There's no point in being upset about it. There's nothing I can do. Federal offices and schools in the nation's capital remain closed this morning as people in the area continue to dig out from under two feet of snowfall. Crystal Lucas got a hand uncovering her buried car from a good Samaritan. Even on a sunny day, they probably wouldn't even say hello. But in, in a time of need, people are here to help. In Virginia and Maryland, residents did their best to chip away at the mounds of snow ahead of the start of the work week. 70-year-old Steve Meinkoff spent hours shoveling out his entire driveway, only to have passing plow trucks undo all of his work. I'm almost so outraged by the state. I'm liable to have a stroke now thinking about it. The impact is also being felt at many of the nation's busiest airports. Carol Alves and her friends have been trying to get home to New Jersey in time for her milestone birthday today. So this is not what I thought my 30th birthday was going to be like, but, you know, it's a story. Airports along the East Coast are slowly getting back to normal, but hundreds of flights have already been canceled for today. Brian Webb for CBS News, New York. Now, more than two dozen deaths in 10 states are being associated with the storm. That includes two in Kentucky. The heaviest snowfall, 42 inches, was reported in Glengarry, West Virginia. The storm also caused major flooding in New Jersey, where hundreds of thousands of customers lost power. Well, it was a, a widespread event, no doubt, right? Well, yeah. and a lot of people still, we, we didn't get it as badly as a lot of other right. places. They're still <laughs> digging out, and we can relate to where sure. they are we right now. We know what a wallop we got, Absolutely. so that says a lot. Yeah. Well, Lexington hip-hop artist Divine Karama and his wife will be making the nearly 400-mile trip to Flint, Michigan, in order to deliver some fresh water. The married couple, along with many volunteers, spent most of yesterday filling a U-Haul with more than 500 cases of water. Water will then be handed over to families who are in need up there. As you know, Flint's water became contaminated with too much lead after the city switched from Detroit's municipal water system and began drawing from the Flint River back in 2014 to save money. Karama says knowing what the people of Flint are going through made him want to do something. When I start seeing the discoloration in the water and all the stories of kids getting sick and the lead in the water, it just kind of tugged on my heartstrings a little bit, so I said, I want to do something. Even if it's small, I want to do something. Karama and his wife are leaving this morning, heading up to Flint. Good for them. Nice thing to do. Well, Jessamine County has become the fourth community in Kentucky to adopt a needle exchange program. The Jessamine Fiscal Court voted 4-2 to two last week for the program, which will allow addicts to exchange used needles anonymously for clean, sterile ones at the local health department. Jessamine County Health Department Public Health Director Randy Gooch says the program is set to start during the beginning of April. Lexington, Louisville, and Falmouth already have needle exchange programs. We'll find out in the next day or so whether Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is ready to run for the United States Senate. Tomorrow is the filing deadline, and Gray says everyone will know by then. Gray, who was reelected as mayor in November of 2014, makes it clear that he is making the decision based on lots of careful consideration. And I've been encouraged by a lot of folks that uh, this is a race that uh, should be that uh, should be made. Um, so it's always encouraging to hear that. I've said many times that I enjoy my job and my role as mayor. 
If he does decide to run, Gray, a Democrat, would be challenging Republican presidential candidate and incumbent U.S. Senator Rand Paul. The field is set for four special state House elections that could drastically change the political landscape in Kentucky. If Republicans win all four seats, the House would be split 50-50, and that would be a first in the state's history. The only race in central Kentucky is for the 62nd District. Republican Philip Pratt and Democrat Chuck Tackett, both of Georgetown, are running to replace Ryan Quarles, who was elected state agriculture commissioner in November. Governor Matt Bevin has scheduled those special elections for March 8th. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg is considering an independent presidential run. The 73-year-old is expected to make a decision in March. News of Bloomberg's consideration was first reported Saturday morning by the New York Times, which said the media mogul would be willing to spend $1 billion of his own money on a White House bid. And that has Republicans and Democrats uh, scrambling and talking about all this. So. It's always interesting when you're talking about politics. Sure. Well, keep it right here this mid morning. The 2015 Miss Universe returned home to the Philippines and said she might have set her eyes, have her eyes set on her next big dream. And also ahead on mid morning, Star Trek is entering a new entertainment frontier to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the sci fi franchise. And we have the 30s outside right now, but check this out. Back toward the west, it's heading our direction. I'll show you much better temperatures coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. You know, that snow was a bit tricky to try to get out in on Saturday and Sunday, but today, yeah, the roadways are pretty clear for the most part, the main roadways. Some back roads and also neighborhoods still with a little snow on there. You got to keep it and take it easy out and about as you're traveling. Mountain Parkway looks just fine. Temperatures already in the mid 30s. We will finish off later on this afternoon at about 42 degrees. I mean, a really good day in store. We need this big time. Try to melt down some of that snow. We're already above freezing and we'll just continue that throughout the afternoon. So, good looking day during the daylight hours. Off into the night and into tomorrow morning. We we'll actually bring in some, uh, some rain on about said snow. You don't want any more snow right now. We're bringing in some rain, and that's the good news. It'll wash away some of that snow, too. So, we have two things working for us as we approach the next 24 to 48 hours. Natural Bridge, how cool is this shot? I sh showed several pictures this morning. Here's another good one, Cora Roberts, there on my Facebook page. And then another good one, how cool is this? This is actually a hole punch cloud. Uh, really neat. They're pretty rare to see, uh, but sometimes during conditions like, like we had that this past weekend, uh, yeah, you get those out there. Really, really neat. And sometimes planes flying through the sky will actually aid in making this happen. But really neat shots right there. That's from Glenna Creech. Really appreciate that very much. Keep posting the pictures. I'll keep showing them off for you. Seven day forecast. Here's your look. So today, 42, mostly sunny, few clouds filter in later on today. Tonight and into tomorrow, the rain moves on in. And many of us will see rain overnight and into tomorrow morning. But I wouldn't ex exactly say it's a complete washout. It will give us that benefit of melting some of that snow. And then we head toward Wednesday. Wednesday is the only day in your seven day forecast where you are 32 or below for overall highs. So that's great news for us, too. And maybe a few flurries, a couple of flakes there on Wednesday, not a big issue. The next chance at that is on Friday. Still don't expect a big issue out of that one either. And then look at your weekend, guys. 50s for highs. <laughs> Much better. We need oh, this yes. week. Don't wait. Yeah, Bring it on. Help us out. All right. Thank you. Well, 2015 Miss Universe returned home to the Philippines and said that she might have her eyes set on her next big dream. Pia Alonzo Wurzbach returned home to the Philippines for the first time since her crowning and that awkward moment when host Steve Harvey mistakenly crowned Miss Columbia instead of her. She said she's using the intense attention that she got after that controversy to focus on her causes like fighting HIV and AIDS. Asked about her plans after her reign, Wurzbach replied, I might be the next Bond girl. Who knows? That's the next dream. Uh -huh. Well, oh, we'll see. And don't count her out, certainly. Uh, she would be a memorable Bond yeah. girl, I'm sure. Well, the ending to Downton Abbey is just a day away, and a new tour that's music to Star Trek fans' ears. Suzanne Marquez now with your eye on entertainment. Star Trek is entering a new entertainment frontier, the concert hall. It's part of the 50th anniversary celebration of the sci-fi franchise. 
called Star Trek The Ultimate Voyage. The performance features live music from the original television series, its later sequels, and the successful films, while TV and movie scenes play on a large screen. If you will be able to see things as well as hear things, you'll become aware of how important music is to movies. The North American tour kicked off last week and will play more than 100 cities before wrapping up in April. If you're more of a Star Wars fan, you can now get your hands on a piece of the original trilogy. Luke Skywalker's blaster is going up for auction. The prop laser gun is the same one that Mark Hamill used in The Empire Strikes Back and goes on the block Thursday. The minimum bid is $200,000. And there's good news for Downton Abbey fans who don't want to wait until March 6th to see the final episode in the series. The complete sixth and final season of the PBS show is being released on DVD tomorrow. That's your Ion Entertainment, Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. All right, coming next, honoring Kentucky authors for their works. Find out who's being inducted into the Kentucky Writers Hall of Fame after the break. And a reminder, Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $48 million. Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot, $75 million. Welcome back in. It is mid-morning on WKYT, sort of a dig-out day. <laughs> yes, it <laughs> is. Get, get out and get moving again. Some Kentucky authors are being honored for their work as the Carnegie Center is hosting the 2016 Kentucky Writers Hall of Fame. We're joined by Neil Chefik, the executive director of the Carnegie Center, along with Jessica Moeller, marketing and communications director, to learn more about it. Welcome. Glad to see you here today. Thanks for having us. Great to be Appreciate here. it. Neil, how does it work that uh, people are selected to be in the Kentucky Hall of Fame? Well, it's uh, basically a three-part process, but it takes about six or eight months. And the first part is we throw it out to the public through social media and just calls to the public to tell us who are their favorite authors going back 200 years. Then it goes to a small committee that's run by the State Arts Council and a bunch of writers and bookstore owners and others are on it. And then they make a selection and then send it to the Carnegie Center for a final, usually rubber stamping. A very important thing, don't you think, to be able to give these writers that kind of recognition? Yes, absolutely, because so many writers spend so much time doing what they do in a room by themselves. It's nice to have a community there really supporting them and knowing that they're doing what they're doing. Jessica, what makes a, a potential author eligible to be a part of the Hall of Fame? Well, this is the second year that we've included a living author. So in the first um, two years, we, um, you had to be deceased. Um, and then in addition to being deceased, published, um, your work needed to be of enduring uh, nature. And you had to have a, a tie with the Commonwealth in some significant way. Who's being honored this year? Um, well, Bobby Ann Mason's our living author. Oh, that's wonderful. And she's following um, Wendell Berry, who was inducted last year as well. So a, a great, great addition. Yes. Yeah. And then we have four deceased ones, and I'm going to try to remember them right now. But okay. Harlan Hubbard, um, James Lane Allen, Gene right. Ritchie, who's the first songwriter, and uh, Alice Hegan Rice, who is a children's book author. Very good. Wonderful that's choices. So yeah. And that's coming up Thursday, January 28th at 7 o'clock at the Carnegie Center. You also have musical entertainment. Yes. We do. It's a kind of a fun addition this year. Um, we have uh, Jean Ritchie's nieces. Oh, um, wow. They're dulcimer players, uh, which is, of course, a wonderful connection to Kentucky and, and Appalachia. So um, people will get a taste of uh, Ritchie's nieces, uh, which are comprised of Jean Ritchie's nieces. Oh, great. Well, it yes. sounds like a lot of fun and uh, certainly a wonderful event to recognize these authors and uh, free admission. Yes. Good deal. That's yeah. right. Thanks for Thank coming. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll keep it right here this mid-morning. Back in a moment, we will be checking in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen here on your Monday. Nothing separates good food from great food like spices. When we mix several together, we often end up with a dish that is indescribably good. That's why today we want to share a few of our homemade spice blends with you. And besides them tasting great, making them from scratch allows us to know exactly what's in them, which is really handy when we're watching our gluten, MSG, or whatever. Sure, we can buy Italian seasoning, but we feel our homemade Tuscan spice blend, which is simply a combo of stuff you probably have right at home, is perfect whether you sprinkle it on chicken or fish. If you're a lover of big, bold flavors, then you're going to love our blackened seasoning. It's packed with flavor, but it's not burn your mouth hot. 
If you're feeling like you want to escape to the tropics right about now, then all you have to do is mix up a batch of our Caribbean spice blend. The nice thing about this, it's good on just about anything. I like to dust it on shrimp and finish them off on a grill pan or saute them in a bit of butter. Either way, the taste of the islands comes out in every bite. I do hope you'll go online and get the recipe for our Caribbean shrimp along with all of our other spice blends. Maybe whip up a batch of pina coladas like you're on vacation. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen where today we found a flavor-packed way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. That actually looked pretty good. It did. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about what. Approval. Yeah. Let's talk about what's going on today. We need today 42 degrees. Gotta love that. Rain moves in later on tonight and into tomorrow. Not a complete wash out, but pretty decent shot at some showers. Wednesday and Friday, those are your days that we could pick up a couple of flakes, a couple of flurries. No issues out of that. I don't expect any accumulation at this moment. And then, guys, the weekend. Look at that. We're 50 on Saturday, 51 on Sunday. Talk about some air we really need. There's only one day in our forecast where we're at 32 degrees or below, which is music to a lot of people's ears. Trying to get the snow off the ground. Just melt it a little bit, and that will help us out big time. Make it be a, well. a nice memory. You know? yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just saying, remember that snow. Yeah. Remember that, uh, that big one? That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for mid morning. We'll have the latest for you coming up here at noon. The Bold and the Beautiful is next. We'll see you at noon. Have a great day.